The chronic uh, myeloproliferative disorders were first classified by Damashek in around 1950. Um, he was a physician practicing in Boston. He recognized that there were patients that presented with a constitution of findings that he grouped together. Uh, these patients uh, tended to have constitutional symptoms such as fevers, night sweats, weight loss. They often had splenomegaly and one of their blood counts might be elevated. And at that time, he found three um, or uh, classified together three myeloproliferative disorders. And those are polycythemia vera, an elevation of the red blood cell count, chronic myeloid leukemia, an elevation of the white cell count, and essential thrombocythemia, an elevation of the platelet count. Now, since then, we have learned that um, there are other overactive bone marrow syndromes that can be classified with the myeloproliferative disorders. And since these are all known to be driven by uh, somatic mutations, they are now classified as myeloproliferative neoplasms. Patients with polycythemia vera may have um, a variety of different symptoms and can present at a variety of different ages. This is a disease that can affect uh, young people uh, in their uh, early uh, 30s um, or older uh, patients uh, with other uh, significant comorbidities. And the effect of the disease uh, may vary at the time of presentation and over time as the disease evolves. Patients may suffer from symptoms of the disease, such as fevers or night sweats, weight loss, pruritus being one of the more intractable symptoms. Uh, symptoms related to splenomegaly, such as early satiety um, or abdominal fullness. Um, patients may also have thromboembolic disorders or suffer from microvascular circulatory uh, events, such as migraines and erythromyalgia. So the disease can uh, present and affect patients in a variety of different ways. So what was uh, truly prescient about uh, Damashek's observation in 1950 is he hypothesized that what we were going to find out about the chronic myeloproliferative disorders is that these were due to overactive signals that govern normal um, hematopoiesis. And he was exactly right. And we found this out first in 1960 and subsequent studies in CML, chronic myeloid leukemia, showing that this disease is due to activation of the ABL tyrosine kinase. Since then, in 2005, JAK2 mutations were found in patients with other pH negative myeloproliferative neoplasms, most commonly uh, seen in polycythemia vera, where about 95, 96% of patients will have a single activating mutation in the JAK2 tyrosine kinase. But the JAK2 mutation, the um, valine to phenylalanine switch at codon 617 or V617F, can be found in other myeloproliferative neoplasms, such as ET, um, and it can be found in uh, chronic myelomonocytic leukemia with thrombocytosis or even acute myeloid leukemia. It's also been recognized in CML. And so clearly it's not just the presence of the uh, uh, specific mutation in JAK2 that drives the phenotype. Yes, it's important in the pathogenesis of the disease, but we are learning that the phenotype of each of these diseases may depend on other mutations that interact with JAK2 and the sequence in which these mutations are uh, obtained by the myeloid stem cell.